My name is Carolyn Bennett. I'm the member of Parliament for St. Paul's and a, and a physician. Um, ten years ago, we put in place a, a government program, a legal government program, that would allow patients, sick patients, to have access to a medicine that worked for them. In 2001, Health Canada put into place the Medical Marijuana Access Regulations, which allowed patients with illnesses like cancer, severe pain, MS, and depression to obtain a license to possess medical grade cannabis in order to treat these illnesses. This is my story. As a physician, I had many patients who, who had huge success um, using medical marijuana. and I suffer from major depressive disorder. I've suffered from depression for about uh, six years. Um, it started in 2004. And um, it originally manifested in different ways. I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't sleep. Um, and it got progressively worse over the years um, because I didn't really pay attention to it. Um, didn't really think it was a, a big deal and uh, just kind of put it on the back burner. And then the beginning of 2010, um, that's when it got worse. Um, I attempt, made an attempt on my life and a bunch of my friends brought me to the hospital um, and I was kept there under suicide watch for a while. And that's when I was put on um, antidepressants. My name is Russell Barth. Well, what illnesses I have, um, I guess you could say I have fibromyalgia. Uh, I also have PTSD from a number of events in my life. And, uh, and I just use cannabis pretty much constantly all day to alleviate the varying symptoms that come with those conditions. My name is Christine Lowe. Primary illness that I have is um, epilepsy. I have uh, anywhere from um, partial seizures, which is basically what looks like on the outside is staring off into space, as going as far as a grand mal seizure, which is full on convulsions <coughs> and such. Those last anywhere from um, anywhere from about uh, three, maybe to about five minutes, like right from beginning to end. And when I have a convulsive seizure, I'm usually oxygen deprived. I stop breathing anywhere from about 90 seconds, which is a minute and a half, to about three, four minutes. The medications I used before, wow, they're pretty numerous. I used, uh, starting at the beginning, I used amitriptyline, Ritalin, I've used perfenazine, chlorpromazine, clonazepam, Ativan, Luvox, Effexor, Demerol, uh, <laughs> just there's so many. First, they started me on uh, Celexa, and then shortly afterwards, they, they, they added uh, Remeron, another antidepressant, and Olanzapine, uh, which was an antipsychotic. Um, the last two were to help with my mood and also, tr and also help in uh, make me uh, eat and uh, sleep and, and all those things and kind of just uh, get me back on the right track. All I really experienced from them was um, a bunch of different side effects. And um, it didn't necessarily make me feel better in terms of my mood. It just kind of, it made me feel like I was in a fog. It, it, it didn't necessarily fix the problems. It just numbed me to them. Let's see, I started anticonvulsants when I was about, about 22. And um, I'd been on anticonvulsants till I was about 32. 32. On phenobarbital, a fentoin, a primadone, yeah. clonazepam, on epival, uh, vulproic acid and carbamazepine, Zerontin, I've done clomazepam. First time I started anticonvulsants, I weighed maybe about um, 165 pounds and within the first two weeks I was up to about 180, 190 pounds. The pharmaceuticals themselves are very hard. There's a very heavy level of sedation or a dissociation. It's a certain shall we say, a medicated numbness that these anticonvulsants um, uh, create in comparison to pharmaceuticals with cannabis. I prefer having the anticonvulsive properties of cannabis over anticonvulsants any time. It, um, 
it alleviates the symptoms that I have without bringing on a lot of the, the side effects. And the side effects that come with the medications are really terrible. I mean, you know, you're talking about bloating, you're talking about constipation, sexual dysfunction, uh, a foggy kind of feeling, uh, you, you know, a general malaise. In terms of a, of a disadvantage to switching from the, the pharmaceuticals to the cannabis, in terms of the use, I would say that I've only seen advantages. Um, now, you know, with, with using cannabis, uh, I smoke about four grams a day, and that allows me to, you know, eat, sleep. Um, I'm, more, I'm more enthusiastic. Um, I'm not as introverted as I once was. I can go out and be social with people and, and not feel, um, you know, sad for no reason. Um, and it's, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't come with with all those other side effects that come with, with the pharmaceuticals. It, it helps my quality of life, and I would say that it, I haven't felt better than I do now in the last seven or eight years. For the millions out there suffering who don't have an alternative or are stuck waiting in the system, it's time to stand up for the right to choose. This documentary is a step in the right direction to create awareness and help stem better change in the current policies regarding medical marijuana as treatment. It's a long road ahead, but it's worth it to better the future. All we need now is patience.